So imagine a cube six miles across deep and high. Damn. And that's how much lava came out. Yellowstone is one of the most iconic and geologically fascinating national parks in the United States. Known for its stunning landscapes, vibrant wildlife, and unbelievable geothermal features, it's hard to think about anything that could take this park down. But something has happened. Yellowstone Park is set to close down, and it's because of something Neil deGrasse Tyson warned everyone about. It's one thing to have a place where it could happen, but you have to gather the magma. It's got to all be liquid, and it's, it's got to be able to punch through. Join us as we find out exactly what's going on at the National Park and if there's anything we can do to stop it. Yellowstone National Park is located primarily in Wyoming, but extends into Montana and Idaho, too. Spanning over 2.2 million acres, there's pretty much nothing you won't find in this national park. One of the park's most renowned features is its geothermal wonders. With over 10,000 geysers, hot springs, mud pots, and fumaroles, Yellowstone offers a mesmerizing display of bubbling pools and erupting geysers. The famous Old Faithful geyser is nothing short of a wonder, but on the other hand, we've got the Grand Prismatic Spring, displaying vibrant colors that you just can't forget. The park is also home to the stunning Grand Canyon of the Yellowstone. Carved by the Yellowstone River, this canyon features majestic yellow and orange cliffs that frame the powerful river. The lower and upper falls within the canyon provide breathtaking viewpoints and are a sight to behold. In addition to all of that, there's Yellowstone Lake, the largest high-elevation lake in North America, which spans over 130 square miles. Here, visitors can do everything from boating to fishing and scenic drives along the lake's shoreline. But while most see the happy and fun side of the national park, there's terror brewing under the surface. The Yellowstone Supervolcano. The supervolcano is classified as a caldera, which is a large volcanic crater formed by the collapse of a volcano after a massive eruption. This volcano spans approximately 45 miles in diameter, showcasing the colossal scale of this volcanic system. The formation of the caldera dates back to ancient volcanic eruptions that occurred millions of years ago. These eruptions were so cataclysmic that they expelled vast amounts of volcanic material, causing the volcanic structure to collapse upon itself, resulting in the formation of the caldera. So, while the volcano we see today is extremely terrifying, it's just the residual material that was left behind after the initial explosion that shook Yellowstone. This supervolcano is unique due to its ongoing geothermal activity. The park's landscape is dotted with hot springs, geysers, mud pots, and fumaroles, which are steam vents emitting gases from deep within the earth. These geothermal features are a direct result of the supervolcano's underlying heat and geologic activity. Old Faithful erupts with remarkable regularity, shooting scalding hot water and steam into the air, often reaching heights of over 100 feet. Although the last colossal eruption from the Yellowstone supervolcano occurred approximately 640,000 years ago, the region is far from dormant. It exhibits a constant buzz of activity in the form of small earthquakes, geothermal heat, and geysers that sporadically erupt. Thousands of small earthquakes are recorded each year in the area surrounding the supervolcano, indicating the ongoing movement of molten rock, or magma, deep beneath the surface. But in a way, that's the Earth's way of giving us a warning, telling us that the danger might be under the surface for the most part, but it won't actually stay that way forever. Scientists researching Yellowstone have taken these warnings seriously. They employ various sophisticated monitoring systems to study the Yellowstone supervolcano and gather critical data about its behavior and potential for future eruptions. These methods allow them to closely track seismic activity, ground deformation, and gas emissions, providing valuable insights into the complex dynamics of the supervolcano. Seismometers are instruments used to measure and record ground vibrations caused by seismic waves. In the case of the Yellowstone supervolcano, 
a network of seismometers is strategically placed throughout the park and its surrounding areas. These seismometers detect and record even the smallest earthquakes and ground tremors associated with volcanic activity. The seismic data allows scientists to pinpoint the location, depth, and magnitude of earthquakes, helping them understand the movement of magma and potential volcanic processes. Global positioning system instruments are used to measure and monitor ground deformation around the Yellowstone supervolcano. These instruments use satellite technology to precisely track and record even the most subtle changes in the position of the Earth's surface. Comparing repeated measurements over time helps scientists detect any shifts or changes in the landscape, indicating potential volcanic activity. GPS data provides valuable information about the movement of magma beneath the surface and helps scientists identify patterns and trends that may be precursors to eruptions, helping to stop them right in their tracks. But they don't just do that. Gas monitoring stations are also set up in strategic locations within Yellowstone National Park to measure and analyze the composition and emission rates of gases released by the supervolcano. Volcanic gases such as sulfur dioxide, carbon dioxide, and hydrogen sulfide can provide important clues about the underlying volcanic processes. Changes in gas emissions can indicate the movement and interaction of magma with surrounding rocks and fluids. If there are any significant deviations from baseline levels or the potential for increased volcanic activity, the researchers would be the first to know. These monitoring methods work in tandem to provide a comprehensive understanding of the Yellowstone supervolcano's behavior. Data collected from seismometers, GPS instruments, and gas monitoring stations are constantly analyzed and integrated to detect any anomalies or patterns that may indicate a significant change in volcanic activity. This way, scientists can gain insights into the complex processes that are happening beneath the Earth's surface and potentially forecast or provide advanced warning of any potential volcanic events. Volcanic systems are highly complex, and volcanic behavior can be influenced by a multitude of factors. So, the continuous monitoring efforts and the data collected contribute to ongoing research and help scientists improve their understanding of the Yellowstone supervolcano's dynamics. Without it, we'd all just be sitting on a ticking time bomb, not knowing anything about what's going on right under our feet. Astrophysicist Neil deGrasse Tyson and volcanologist Janine Krippner explored the potential eruption of the Yellowstone supervolcano, shedding light on its unique characteristics on an episode of the Star Talk podcast. And things got really interesting. During their conversation, Tyson and Krippner defined a supervolcano as a volcano that has experienced a significant eruption in the past. They emphasized that the majority of volcanic eruptions are smaller in scale compared to super-eruptions, which set supervolcanoes apart in terms of their magnitude and impact. These super-eruptions are classified as VEI-8 on the Volcanic Explosivity Index, indicating their extraordinary explosiveness and the substantial volume of magma involved. The Volcanic Explosivity Index is a scale used by scientists to measure and classify the explosiveness of volcanic eruptions. It provides a standardized way to compare eruptions based on various factors such as eruption cloud height, volume of erupted material, and duration of the eruption. The VEI scale ranges from 0 to 8, with 0 being the lowest level of explosivity and 8 representing the most violent and catastrophic eruptions. Each VEI level corresponds to specific eruption characteristics, allowing scientists to estimate the intensity and impact of an eruption. The scale takes into account a combination of factors, including the height of the eruption column, the volume of solid volcanic material or tephra, ejected, and the duration of the eruption. These parameters are often determined through field observations, satellite imagery, and analysis of deposits left behind by past eruptions. At the lower end of the scale, VEY02, eruptions are relatively small and localized, with limited impacts beyond the immediate vicinity of the volcano. These eruptions typically produce low ash plumes and release a relatively small volume of volcanic material. As the VEY level increases to 3, 4, eruptions become more explosive and can generate taller eruption columns. The volume of erupted material also increases, potentially leading to the formation of pyroclastic flows, fast-moving avalanches of hot ash, gases, and rock fragments. 
These eruptions can have significant regional impacts and affect air travel, agriculture, and local communities. When the VEI level reaches 5, eruptions are considered large, with substantial ash plumes and extensive distribution of tephra. The impacts can be widespread, affecting a large area surrounding the volcano and causing disruptions to transportation, infrastructure, and the environment. So here's where things go beyond the immediate vicinity of the volcano, and where things get extremely serious. The highest end of the scale 6-8 is where super eruptions occur. These are the most catastrophic and rare events, characterized by colossal eruption columns that can reach the stratosphere. The volume of erupted material is immense, and the effects can be global, impacting climate patterns and causing significant environmental and societal consequences. That's why having access to something like the Volcanic Explosivity Index is so important. With it, scientists can categorize and compare volcanic eruptions based on their explosiveness and estimate their potential hazards and impacts. This scale aids in understanding the magnitude and severity of volcanic activity, allowing for better preparedness, hazard assessment, and mitigation strategies in volcanic regions around the world. Neil deGrasse Tyson and Janine Krippner went on to discuss the immense challenge of accumulating a vast amount of magma in a single location, which is a critical factor in triggering a super eruption. They emphasized that this process is inherently complex and time-consuming, requiring an extensive buildup of magma beneath the Earth's surface over a prolonged period. This accumulation of magma in a concentrated reservoir sets potential super eruptions in motion, Drawing upon their expertise, Tyson and Krippner shared a significant observation about the magma composition beneath Yellowstone. In order for an eruption to occur, a higher proportion of liquid magma is necessary. Their analysis suggested that a minimum threshold of 30% liquid magma is required to create the conditions conducive to an eruption. Yellowstone is already at over half that amount. All signs lead to the possibility of the explosion being much sooner than anyone had anticipated. And if it blows, it might just take everything out with it. Super eruptions can unleash vast amounts of volcanic ash, propelling it high into the atmosphere, reaching staggering altitudes of up to 80 miles. The dispersion of ash particles over such great distances can have significant consequences on global climate patterns. When volcanic ash is injected high into the atmosphere during a super eruption, it undergoes complex interactions with air currents and weather systems. The tiny ash particles can stay in the air for an extended period, distributed by wind patterns across vast regions and even continents. As the ash spreads throughout the atmosphere, it forms a dense cloud that can absorb and scatter sunlight, leading to a phenomenon known as volcanic winter. The presence of a dense volcanic ash cloud can significantly reduce the amount of sunlight reaching the Earth's surface. This reduction in solar radiation can have profound effects on the planet's temperature and weather patterns. The ash particles act as a barrier, reflecting incoming sunlight back into space and causing a temporary cooling effect on the Earth's surface. This cooling effect can lead to changes in rainfall patterns, altered wind patterns, and disruptions to regional and global climates. The consequences of such global cooling can be far-reaching. Agriculture and food production may be affected due to changes in growing seasons and reduced crop yields. Ecosystems may experience disruptions as species struggle to adapt to the altered conditions. Additionally, the cooling effect of volcanic ash can impact human societies, potentially leading to economic challenges, resource scarcity, and social upheaval. The historical record provides evidence of the significant climate impact of past super-eruptions, for instance, the eruption of Mount Tambora in 1815, considered one of the most powerful volcanic events in recorded history, led to the year without a summer in 1816. The widespread dispersal of volcanic ash resulted in abnormally cold temperatures, failed harvests, and social unrest across many parts of the Northern Hemisphere. That's not all. The experts discussed the disruptive effects of volcanic ash on air travel, emphasizing how it can pose hazards to aircraft engines and flight operations. They emphasized the danger of flying through volcanic ash, as the tiny abrasive particles can cause engine damage and affect visibility. This poses a considerable risk to aviation safety, highlighting the importance of monitoring volcanic activity and issuing appropriate flight advisories during eruptions. 
Neil deGrasse Tyson and Janine Krippner shed light on the crucial role played by the Yellowstone Volcano Observatory and other organizations in actively monitoring the activity of the Yellowstone supervolcano. They emphasize the importance of a comprehensive monitoring system that is in place to detect and analyze various indicators of volcanic unrest, providing vital information for scientific research and public safety. During their discussion, Neil deGrasse Tyson and Janine Krippner shed light on the crucial role played by the Yellowstone Volcano Observatory and other organizations in actively monitoring the activity of the Yellowstone supervolcano. The collaborative efforts of the United States Geological Survey, the University of Utah, and the National Park Service form the backbone of the Yellowstone Volcano Observatory. This collective partnership brings together the expertise and resources of these organizations to effectively monitor and study the Yellowstone supervolcano. The observatory employs a range of other monitoring techniques, including ground deformation measurements, satellite imagery analysis, and thermal monitoring. These methods help scientists track changes in the shape and movement of the Earth's surface, identify areas of heat and thermal anomalies, and provide additional insights into the dynamic behavior of the supervolcano. If they don't do their job right, everything collapses. Large flood basalt volcanoes occurring over millions of years differ from super eruptions in terms of scale and lava type. These volcanic events involve the eruption of extensive volumes of runny lava that can cover vast areas, creating massive volcanic plateaus. While they can have long-lasting effects on regional environments, Flood basalt eruptions are distinct from the explosive nature and global impact of super eruptions. The media's portrayal of the risks associated with Yellowstone's eruption often tends to exaggerate the potential dangers. It's important to rely on accurate scientific information and assessments provided by volcanologists and authoritative sources. Given the international collaboration and scientific community involved in monitoring Yellowstone, the notion of government secrecy when it comes to imminent eruptions is highly unlikely, as the scientific community is committed to sharing information and ensuring public safety. With all of that said, if the park authorities have decided to close down the park, it means that the situation might have gotten to the point where it's all hands on deck. So what do you think? Will we be able to catch the Yellowstone volcano's potential eruption? Or will this one volcano destroy the entire Earth as a whole? We're going to have to wait a little longer to find out. Like always, if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up, and we'll see you in the next one.